Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you very much for joining me for today's video. Now, before I get started with my best and worst luxury purchases, I just wanna give you guys a little gentle reminder because today is a big day for me. I mean, not today as I'm filming this because it's Friday, but today when you guys watch this, it will be Sunday the 28th of April, which is London Marathon Day. And yep, I'm running it, or at least I hope I'm gonna be able to run it. I'd imagine there's gonna be some walking, some crawling and some meandering in there as well. But nonetheless, I'm doing it, and I'm doing it all for Dogs Trust, which is a charity which really is close to my heart. And if you guys didn't watch the video that we made back in December, I think it was, I'll leave an I button above so that you guys can watch that. And if anyone has anything spare to give this month, it's just been payday. So if you have anything, a pound, 50p, whatever you can spare, I would really, really appreciate it if you could sponsor me. And my Just Giving link is down below in the description box. For anyone that has already donated slash sponsored me, thank you so much. You have no idea how much it means to me. I am eternally grateful. And all of the floofs that the Dogs Trust look after and take care of and rehome will be most grateful as well. Now, let's get started with today's video. So as the title would suggest, it is my best and my worst luxury purchases. So I'm gonna start off on a positive note. I'm gonna start off with my five best luxury purchases. And it was quite difficult actually to narrow these down, but I had to look at my collection and I just thought, what am I really sort of overjoyed by the fact that I've bought this item? What was really good value for money? What have I worn a lot? Versatility, all of those kind of aspects have come in to my decision making for this category. So I'm gonna start off with item number one, which is my vintage Chanel rucksack slash backpack, whatever you wanna call it. Um, now this actually hasn't been in my bag collection for too long. I bought this toward the tail end of last year. I bought it secondhand, it is vintage obviously. Um, the date of this one is 1997, so it's just over 20 years old. And I actually bought this off eBay. Now I think I've mentioned before when you're buying items off eBay, don't do so unless you are very confident. I did a lot of research into buying this bag and I was very confident when I purchased it that it was authentic. But if you're not so confident, you're not sure, if you're not sure about the seller, they've got some dodgy feedback, my advice, just don't, don't buy. But yes, my vintage rucksack. I, I was gonna say I bought this on a whim. I didn't buy it on a whim. I was looking for a rucksack because on Instagram I had seen a vintage Chanel rucksack. It wasn't this exact one, but I'd seen one and I kind of just started swooning over it. I became very quickly obsessed with it. I didn't know how much I was going to use a backpack because they do sort of remind me of school days and I didn't know if it would particularly fit in with my style, but for some reason it was pulling at me and it was saying, I need a rucksack that has to be Chanel. And I bought this for, I think I got quite a steal. I bought this for, I think it was 1,100 pounds and I made a really cheeky offer to the seller and just because of the time of year they accepted. So I feel like I really got a good deal with this bag. It is versatile. I have worn this and used it so much. In fact, I've surprised myself at how much I have worn a rucksack. I mean, it helps that it's not, you know, East Pack <laughs> and it's Chanel. I mean, that instantly makes it a little bit more wearable, um, but it's just such a good bag. It looks quite small, but as you can see from the side, it's really quite deep. It fits a load of stuff in there. It always fits a big camera in there as well so that Simon doesn't have to carry it. And it's so, so practical because it's a backpack. It leaves you hands free. Um, I don't find that it's sort of susceptible to thieves. Uh, because it has the classic CC lock enclosure, which you get on the majority of the double flat bags. And then it has this little draw cord as well, which admittedly is a bit stiff. So I feel like if you had it on your back, you'd feel if someone was tugging at you. But yes, I am so happy that I bought this bag and it was money well spent. 
On to best purchase number two, and it is a pair of sunglasses. Now these I also bought secondhand. I actually bought these off Vestiaire, and these are the Celine Baby Audrey sunglasses. They are my most worn sunglasses alongside my Ray-Ban rounds, the ones with the gold frames. They are classic, they're chic, they are so wearable, they literally go with anything. I mean, they're just a, a very basic, I think, black frame. The size of the lenses is, for me, I think just right. And I just find that they, I don't know, they make me feel quite confident. I am a big sunglasses wearer, as you guys will know. I don't often tend to go out even in winter without sunglasses on. Lots of you guys have said that that's great because it protects your eyes from wrinkles. That's not the reason that I wear them. It just makes me feel more confident when I can sort of hide behind my sunglasses. Um, and yeah, I just, I absolutely love these. I bought them for about £69, which is, again, a bit of a steal. They didn't really have any signs of wear to them. There was no scratches on the lenses. There probably is now because I tend to put them on top of my head and then they fall off on the floor. But yeah, these are such a good pair of sunglasses. So happy I bought these. Um, they are quite an old style. I think these might be about five years old now. So if you're trying to get your hands on a pair, because lots of you guys message me on Instagram about these sunglasses, asking what style they are, I will do some digging around. And if I can find some relevant links for these where you can purchase them online, I will leave those down below so that if you're trying to get your hands on a pair of these, you'll know where to go. Best purchase number three the Gucci loafers. Now these are the Brixtons, not the Jordans. The difference between the two being that the Brixtons have the collapsible heel, which you can tell if it has a collapsible heel or not by this diagonal stitching on the back. Admittedly, I have never once worn them with the collapsible heel. I just don't feel that that's a very good look. I prefer to just wear them as basic loafer. And I think you'll probably be able to see from the state of this, it is very well worn. I just haven't got round to having them resold, but up the top here, the stitching is starting to show, so I'm gonna have to have them resold with a rubber sole. Uh, the advantage of that is just that leather soles are quite slippy, they also wear out a lot quicker and then can damage the shoe like this if you haven't had them resold in time. So if you purchase a pair of these Gucci loafers, it's worth, before you even wear them, just going out and getting a rubber sole put on the bottom. But yeah, these have been an absolute godsend. They have probably been my most worn flat shoe aside from my Vasia trainers. They are durable. There's, I've got a couple of little scuffs on the bottom, but that would probably just be due to me being clumsy and uh, falling over whilst I'm walking. They are so versatile. They go with so many outfits. As you all know, my uniform tends to be jeans, t-shirt and a blazer, and these are perfect for that. I've worn them all day for walking. They are made of the softest leather. And that's another thing to just bear in mind between the difference between the Brixtons and the Jordans. I personally, some people might disagree, I personally find that the Brixtons are the more comfortable of the two. The Jordans have a more structured leather, which to me feels a little bit stiff. And I felt when I tried them on in the store that they would need breaking in, whereas these have never Never needed breaking in they have been soft and supple since the first day that I bought them and I just I just love them so yes these were when I purchased them they were 450 pounds since then they have gone up by a hundred pounds so there's a lesson to be learned here if there's something that you really like these luxury brands do put their prices up year after year sometimes season after season so if there's something you really like and you can afford it and you need it then I would just go for it. Item number four. It will be no surprise to you guys that Judith is featuring in this video. For those of you who are new, Judith is her name. So this is the Loewe small puzzle bag. Mine is, when did I buy this? I believe for my 30, is it my 31st birthday, I think? 
I don't know, birthday maths. I forgot how old I was the other day, so, you know, that's age for you. Um, I've had her for a few years, and she is still, I'm just examining her now, in immaculate condition. This is by far my best handbag purchase I've ever made. And actually, over the last, I would say, six months, when I've been going online and doing what I do, just perusing, seeing what's about, if there's been a new colour of this, or even an old colour like black or navy, and I see it, I just think, oh, should I get Judith a sister? And I just feel myself being drawn to buying another one because this bag has been that amazing. Like, I cannot fault it. I often get questions from you guys saying, is the puzzle really worth it? Yes, without a shadow of a doubt. I can barely list any negatives about this bag. I love it so much. She's immaculate. She's roomy. It's just a practical bag in terms of how you can wear her. Another thing that's worth mentioning, and I think this is always something to bear in mind when you're buying a luxury bag, especially if maybe it's your first luxury bag, is the colour and the fabric in which you're buying. Leather, I would say, unless you're a vegan, um, is probably the best way to go for your first luxury bag. Unless you really love velvet or you really love raffia, I just think leather is the best option. And then also to think about your colour. Black obviously is very classic, but as are the neutral colours. So this shade of tan is a really good colour to go for because it doesn't show up dirt as much as some of the paler colours like white or cream or nude. And also this is a good colour for working for all the seasons. So I feel like with some bags they only really suit a specific season which is why I don't wear my Gucci velvet loafers in spring summer because I feel like velvet is a bit more of an autumn winter fabric but this for me I find works really well in spring summer it works with all my like white linen dresses little Levi's cutoffs and then it works with all my big chunky wool coats in winter as well so it's just such a good all-rounder she literally ticks every single box and I wouldn't be surprised if this year at some point I did end up buying her a sister. Now for my final best luxury purchase ever, it is my Hermes Oran sandals. These are by far my most worn sandals for summer. Admittedly, they do start off a little bit stiff. If any of you have bought them off my recommendation, I have warned you all in countless videos and on Instagram that they do start off quite stiff. In fact, they ripped my little toes to shreds. They really did. But after, I'd say it was somewhere in between like five to 10 wears, they broke in and that's when the magic happens. That's when they become like slippers. Okay, not like Ugg slippers, but they do just magically break in and then they become the most comfortable sandals that you've ever had ever. Um, I just love them. Admittedly, I am not a big fan of Hermes. I think it is an overpriced brand, but there's something about these that I really like. I think they're chic, the stitching is gorgeous. The colour of these, they actually go really nicely with Judith, so that tends to be my sort of shoe bag option for summer. Now, as I said, I bought these last spring summer. Um, I think I bought them for 4 90 which is still the current price. These haven't actually gone up, and I would have actually bought these in another colour. However, so many different brands over the last year, year and a half, brought out dupes for these sandals. I told you guys last year about June that brought out a pair of sandals called Lupe. They are so comfortable. I actually have three, maybe even four pairs of those now. And that's the reason why I haven't bought these in black or white or another colour. Just because I feel like one pair is maybe enough for £490, you know? Um, so if anyone doesn't quite have the budget for these Hermes sandals, I will leave link below again for those dupes. Right, now moving on to the not so positive category, which is the worst category of luxury purchases that I have made in my lifetime. Now, these are my Acne Jensen boots. It pains me to put these in the worst list because if you just look at them, they are a mighty fine boot 
They're classic, wearable, little bit of a heel, very, very nice, chic, pointed toe, black suede, Chelsea boot, very English, even though obviously it's a Scandi brand. Yeah, they're beautiful. However, they cripple my feet. Now, this might slightly be my own fault because acne don't make half sizes. Boo, this is bad news, acne, because I am a half size. I am a 40 and a half. And unfortunately, I bought these in a 40, <laughs> which was probably not a good idea. But I tried them on, actually tried them on in Liberty, tried them on in a 40 and a 41, and the 41 felt massive. Not only did they feel huge, they made my feet look like canoes. Like you could have sailed to Cuba in my shoes, they were that big. So I decided to go for the 40 because they do have the pointed toe and I have very slim long feet. So often a pointed toe works in my favor if I need to size down because my toes will just sort of filter into this point where normally that's sort of wasted space. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. When they arrived, I tried them on and they felt comfortable enough, wore them a couple of times, not for very long, felt comfortable enough. Wore them for like a day, and then I was like, oh, this was an epic fail. My feet were crying inside these shoes. Now I did go for these in the black suede because I thought that that would be the softer option, but it is to me quite a stiff and quite a hard suede. Maybe the leather is the softer option, I don't know. If you've got the leather versus the suede, let us know your feelings down below in the comments. Um, but yes, unfortunately these have had to go in my worst category and they are also up for sale. <laughs> they need to leave my life ASAP. Worst purchase number two is the Gucci Marmont belt. I bought this when me and Simon went to New York for New Year, which was probably about two years ago. I bought it alongside a Gucci Marmont bag. And I think perhaps that maybe my taste just changed over the last two years. And that perhaps this massive, ginormous, in your face logo just became a little bit too much. Because you guys might have noticed that I don't really wear my Marmont bag anymore either. I haven't actually thought about selling it. This one will go up for sale. It's not on my Depop yet, but it will go up on my Depop ASAP. Um, I've worn this, I wore it a few times when I first bought it, um, but it's, it's heavy for one. This buckle weighs so much, it really is. And the problem is, is that when you wear it, it sort of pulls down on the front of your jeans so it makes them a little bit of an odd shape but it's also quite uncomfortable when you sit down uh, now i did just read on net porte that this is designed to be a waist belt and although some of my jeans are high-waisted so therefore it would fit around the waist i have a lot of jeans that are sort of a little bit lower slung mid-waisted if you will and this unfortunately falls at an awkward place where when you sit down like I am now, the buckle sort of digs, digs in when you're sort of sitting down. So it's not the most comfortable of belts. And yeah, if truth be told, I just think I'm over this whole GG logo. Now, moving on to bags. I actually only have put this one in my worst purchases list because this bag is probably one of the only bags that I have not got the wear out of it that I should have done for the price I paid and that I massively regret buying. This is the Celine Phantom and I think it might also be called luggage. Um, in what way this is luggage, I have no idea. But this was one of those, it was a moment of weakness, it was one of those iconic bags that hit Instagram and social media and I got sucked in and I wanted one. And I picked probably the worst fabric colour combination there is, aside from if this came in white suede, white nubuck, even worse, I probably picked the worst 
variety of design that there was. So this is, as you can see, tan suede. I bought this second hand off Vestiaire. I paid £1,300 for it, which at the time I was so thrilled with. I thought I have got bargain of the century, which maybe it would have been if I had used it. I've probably worn this four times. Now, the struggle is on the back, and I don't know if this is going to show up on camera as much as it does in real life, but there was damage on the back. There was like some sort of, I don't know, maybe denim transfer. You can see it on these lines here, where there had been some sort of dirt or fabric transfer on the back, and it's made it a little bit dark. Now, the only issue with suede, or rather one of the issues with suede, there are many issues with suede, um, one of the issues with suede is not only does it uh, become very susceptible to denim transfer, fabric transfer, colour transfer, you can't really wear them in the rain. Even if you use suede protector, this is still going to get damaged in the rain. So you've got to be very careful when wearing these kind of bags or anything made out of suede and nubuck. It also scratches quite easily. Again, not sure if you can see on camera, but there are a few scratches on here. And it's nice for a bag to have a bit of character, but this to me just looks messy. And it's just, it's, it's one step too far into character that I can't quite sort of bring myself to use. It's also just a really impractical bag. It's got no shoulder strap. I think you might be able to buy shoulder straps, but I mean, come on, if the bag doesn't come with a shoulder strap, I'm not paying extra money to buy a shoulder strap. It's just really awkward. It's one of them bags which you can only hold by the handle or on the crook of your arm. And because it's so cumbersome, it's just awkward. It's awkward to carry. It's got no real closure, like it's quite an open bag. There's like no security closure there. These little, uh, that won't even go in now. These little flappy bits here to the side will fold in. But again, it's still just such a bulky, cumbersome bag. And it is a massive regret. I wish I hadn't spent that money on it. Worst ever bag. I think that's what we can call this. Worst ever bag. Now, I think some of you might be surprised to see these in my worst category. These are the famous Chanel sling bags. And I bought these in Paris for my 32nd birthday, I think it was. Simon took me on a late trip to Paris in September. My birthday is in August the 12th, in case anyone's wondering, because it's coming up soon. Um, and I'd wanted these shoes for ages. I tried them on in Selfridges about five, six, 30 times. And originally I wanted the... I don't know, what would you call them? They're not tan, but they're like that sort of pale beige with the black toe cap. Those were what I really had my eye on. But because it took me so long to be able to track them down in my size, and because they were constantly sold out, I kind of went off that colour because I started seeing everyone wear them. And I saw the black in Chanel in Paris. We went to the famous store where you would get the white carrier bags on Rue Cambon, and I decided to treat myself to this black pair because I thought they're black, they're chic, it's my birthday, you know, we're going all the French vibes. And they are a great shoe. And again, it pains me to put these in the worst category. But unfortunately, they make a very unusual noise when you walk. And I don't know if anyone else has this issue. I don't have shellac on my toes at the moment, but when I wear shellac, it's even worse because inside they are leather. And I know that some people have this issue with the ballet pumps as well, but they're quite, there's not a lot of room in terms of like height of the shoe. They're quite sort of squished and narrow in terms of this depth. They're also narrow in terms of width because clearly the French have very slim feet, but yeah, there's not a lot of room. So actually what happens is my big toe pushes up on this section here. And as I walk, if I have nail polish on, shellac or normal or without nail polish, it rubs against my toenail and it squeaks. So as I'm walking, I'm going, eh, 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 which 
it's just a bit awkward really especially when you're on your own and you haven't got someone else to giggle about it with so yeah unfortunately these have had to go in the worst category for that reason and also for the reason that they're not actually the most comfortable shoes again i don't know if that's because it's a sling back and so therefore there's not a lot of support but it is not an all day shoe these are not the kind of shoe that I can wear into London and walk around in all day. These are the sort of shoe that I can literally pop on for a couple of hours, which is a shame. Um, and yeah, I just think these were £630, I think. And actually, I might have paid a little bit more because I bought them in, in Paris. But I just think that for that price, I haven't had the wear out of them that I really should have done. And it breaks my heart because to look at them, oh, they're just beautiful. They're so beautiful. But I just don't wear them enough because I know that if I put them on, they're not gonna be very comfortable. And I'm gonna sound like I am breaking wind as I walk. Now, my final worst purchase might look familiar like my best purchase however inside is not the baby Audrey's inside this Celine sunglasses case are the Celine edge sunglasses Instagram pulled me into buying these and so many people can pull these off but unfortunately there are days where I feel like these don't suit me. There are days where I feel like they do suit me and it can be dependent on many things. But for the most part, I feel like when I put these on, I look like a bit of a dick, <laughs> to be completely honest. So exhibit A, I've just got my mirror over here because the unfortunate thing is, is that you need to adjust these to the perfect sort of height. Now, these were quite expensive, they were 210 pounds. I managed to find them because again, like the baby Audrey's, they're an older style. They are Celine with the E with the little flick on the top. Sorry, I don't know what that's called. <laughs> we'll just call it the flick on the top for now. They're old school Celine. And yeah, I found them on pretevoir.com or pretevoir.co.uk, I think. And they were 210 pounds which is quite a lot of money. I often tend to buy sunglasses either duty free or secondhand on Vestia, so I don't think I've ever paid this much for a pair of sunglasses. And yeah, sunglasses are something which you can splurge on a little bit more because they're something that you'll wear more than likely every day, especially through summer. For me, every day, even in winter. But yeah, they're just something that I don't get the wear out of. Same with the slingbacks for the amount of money that I paid for them. It's dependent on what I look like in a day as to whether I can wear them. And you might be able to see if I do like a side profile, can you see that they like go outwards? Like look, they're like on a slant, which I just find really awkward because these only look good at a certain angle. So if you have a small face or maybe it's something to do with face shape, then great. But if you have a face that looks like mine, I'd say just give them a miss. I just feel like they're also maybe a little bit too cool for me. I don't think I'm cool enough to, <laughs> to pull these off. Right guys, that is it for today's video. If you have got a worst purchase or maybe a best purchase, I would quite like to hear about them down in the comment section below. It doesn't have to be luxury, just let me know. What are you thrilled? that you have bought in your lifetime. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, today I am running the London Marathon, so please send me all your good vibes, send me your legs even, because I might need some spares, send me KFC, and send me all of your money for the floofs. I jest, I jest, but thank you very much for all your donations, and I will catch you guys next week for a special marathon vlog.